This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Hope you're doing well out there. Before we dive into the news, I just wanted to say that we did do a recent video on how to really build a PC and optimize it for After Effects performance. Check that video out if you're kind of confused on what Intel CPU or what AMD Ryzen CPU to buy, or which new NVIDIA RTX 3000 GPU to get, or the new AMD RX 6000 series GPUs. Best bang for your budget and your performance in After Effects, check that video out down below. Lots of awesome stuff coming from the guys over at Plugin Everything. As always, they recently released their new Displacer Pro plugin, which is actually a free plugin that you can get over at AE Scripts. And basically, it's a juiced up A displacement map plugin, and it's pretty much beefed up for the GPU. So you can pretty much displace things with translations similar to displacement map in After Effects. We can also use rotation and scale. You can use different modes such as hue, saturation, luminance, etc. You can actually adjust the map that the plugin is using, including adjusting the gamma, the softness, the easing. There's built-in chromatic app operation, anti-aliasing, it's 32 bits per channel, and most importantly, it's free. And I'm going to do a first impression at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. They also released a really, really big new paid plugin called Autofill. And this is basically a plugin that really makes it really easy to fluidly fill the bounds of your layers. It automatically creates really beautiful filling animations, flowing animations on your shapes or images. And basically, it's very, very intelligent. So it uses transparency in the context of your image or graphics as a guide for which direction things should really grow and fill in. So if you've ever done something like this manually in After Effects using like maps and noise and all that stuff, it looks very fake. It looks very computed and unnatural, unorganic. And this method right here makes it really, really easy, very fast and very automatic, but still maintain that very organic type reveal. You can use it for texture changes, dissolves, transitions, and more. Um, you can think more beyond just handwriting signatures. We're talking about flourishes, abstract design, growth, and a lot of other aspects you can use for it. They have an awesome, beautiful trailer for it. GPU accelerated, tons of cool presets, speed maps, and it's about 50 bucks US. And finally, AE plugin is going to be releasing a new tool soon. It's called AE Benchmark. It's actually an After Effects extension. It does exactly what it says. It serves as a benchmark for After Effects, which will help you benchmark your own computer, testing your CPU, your GPU, your RAM, and other configurations. It'll spit out a score. And you can pretty much upload that score and share with the community, and you can view other people's scores as well. So you kind of compare scores. It's kind of like a geek bench for After Effects, and it's coming soon. It's not quite out yet, but it's coming soon. Stay tuned for that. Adobe has finally released Illustrator for the iPad. So now we have Lightroom, Photoshop, and finally Illustrator. It's optimized for the Apple Pencil. It works with Photoshop for the iPad, and you're gonna get layer preservations when you import those Photoshop layers into Illustrators. The core features are pretty much there, with more features to come in later versions, including variable width strokes, new brushes, drop shadow, and other effects. So keep in mind this is version one, and it's missing some of the intricacies that you're gonna find in the desktop version of Illustrator. In my opinion, it might be a little bit too late just because a lot of people have adopted Affinity Designer. I know a lot of designers prefer that application. It's also more affordable, it's not a subscription model, and it's been very, very popular on the iPad. But I'm thankful to see Illustrator on the iPad finally. So check it out, download it, try it out. In more Adobe news, After Effects version 17.5 was just released a couple days ago. They improved the rotor brush and made it a lot faster, obviously. And what's really important is that they've actually added something called 3D gizmos and improved camera tools for navigating 3D, which is a much welcome feature in After Effects. So as you can see at the very, very top here, the whole camera control icons look completely different. So there's new icons that I think makes a lot more sense in the original icons. In the original icons, if you were a beginner in After Effects, you didn't know what any of these things actually did. But now the icons more accurately kind of show what it does. And if you hover over it, you can see we have some new tools right here to navigate 3D. So these three right here, very, very much welcome. You can use the same shortcut, which is C on the keyboard, to switch between the tools right here. So we can orbit the same way. Notice how it shows the kind of cursor point in the middle, so you can really see your reference point right here, which is very, very nice. You can switch over to something else, like orbit around scene, and it's gonna be a slightly different. And of course we have the pan tool under cursor or center of screen. And now whenever we pan, we can really see the center point and the context point. So we can really, really visualize how much we've moved. Because in the past, if you didn't have like a particle system or some sort of grid or reference guide, you really had no idea how much you were moving, if you were rotating in the right direction or not. So these little basic, you know, kind of tool tips will really help you see visually what's going on in your 3D scene. And although it's not perfect, it definitely is a step in the right direction, especially for After Effects, because the 3D navigation really sucks in After Effects. And here you can see the same thing as well, our kind of dolly tool right here, which is very much welcome. And also we have new gizmos for 3D layers as well. So this is a 3D layer in After Effects. Once we enable the 3D, we can see that we now have a new, newly designed gizmo section right here. 
And so not only do we have the original XYZ axis, but we now have rotation control. So if I go ahead and let's say I wanted to rotate something between the X and Y axis, that was kind of hard to do. You have to go into the rotations and really mess around with both values. Now we can visually grab into this axis right here, just move things around. This is the rotation in Z. Um, rotation in X, you can see it's going on there. It'll show you X, I'll show you the degrees that you're rotating as well. So you can really, really do the math properly without having to eyeball it. And if I create a new camera right here and we can kind of see some extra controls, you can see that whenever we translate something, you can really see the amount of pixels being moved in a visual tooltip manner and the reference point as well. So this makes not only navigating 3D easier, but also moving things around and shifting things around and rotating things around visually which is a much nice welcome change. Of course, some people say that the gizmos are a little bit too big, too thick, and they wish there was a way to change the thickness of things, which will probably come in future versions of After Effects. So awesome stuff here. Great job, Adobe. Before I go any further, I want to give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one platform to make an amazing website, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing themes to choose from, fully customizable so you can make it the way you want it to look like without having any coding knowledge required. They have awesome 24 hour support. And best of all, if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the dojo. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash dojo. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So if you're a design or film faculty or student, you're gonna be extremely happy because Maxon recently announced that they're gonna make Maxon One available for students at a very, very cheap cost of basically free with a small processing fee of $299 US dollars. So qualified faculty and students can actually acquire a six months renewable license for Maxon One for a small processing fee of $299 US dollars. This includes Cinema 4D, Redshift for Cinema 4D, and of course the whole Red Giant Complete. This is an amazing, amazing opportunity for students if you're qualified, if you're in film school or art school. I'm not sure what the qualifications are, but it seems like you have to renew yourself every six months or so, and you can get pretty much the whole Maxon collection for a very, 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 pretty much nominal fee. Lastly, we have some goodies from Premium Beat. They're releasing 25 free unique vintage sound effects. Pretty awesome stuff here. You can never have too many sound effects in your library. They're also giving away 15 free Premiere Pro texture transitions, as well as 10 free texture tile animations in the Mogurt form. Loving the free stuff, premium beat. So the last thing I wanna do, so I wanna walk through the new plugin everything, Displacer Pro plugin. I've actually never used this plugin before, so this is gonna be a first time using it, but I did watch a demo video right here. So we're gonna apply Displacer Pro, which again is a free plugin. And right off the bat, you're gonna see that we have some basic controls similar to the displacement map. So you can easily just translate things in the X and Y, just like the displacement map effect. If you don't specify a map, it's gonna use itself as a map, which is really great by default. I wish the plugin did that. I don't think it does that by default. Um, and what's different is that you can actually displace by rotation as well. So this is a little bit different than the displacement map effect as well as scale. So already this is a much welcome feature. And as you can see, we're getting some edge issues. So we can go into the edge behavior, you can either repeat the edges or mirror the repeat, which looks pretty nice, or edge repeat. I'm gonna stick with the mirror repeat for now. We also have anti-aliasing options in case that things get kind of weird and kind of grainy. And of course we can view our final result or our map. So the map is what this plugin is using to displace everything. And if we go into the map adjustments and we view it as the map, we can actually adjust the gamma of things, you know, maybe make things a little bit softer by applying a blur to it and maybe shifting the offset a little bit, maybe playing around with the easing. And if we go back into our final result, you can see that things look a little bit different and it's because we're adjusting the map, the displacement map that this plugin is using to distort everything. So this is pretty cool, a way to kind of visually see the map that you're manipulating and then you know applying that map to the displacement. Um, and of course, if you want, you can change the channel. So you know, if you want to use the saturation instead of the luminance, it's gonna shift different aspects based on the saturation rather than the luminance. And you have blue, green, red, alpha, and whatnot. And of course, if you want to use a different layer, I'm gonna use this kind of carbon fiber thing that I made in Chef Code Mirror as a displacement map for my mirror water right here, which again, I made a tutorial on this, links down below. Um, shameless plug, I'm gonna select my carbon fiber JPEG, and already you can really see how this is really affecting everything. So we can translate it, 
and we're getting like a completely different look just based on my displacement map and this is pretty cool i mean this is definitely a displacement map killer and of course i'm gonna be using this a lot more for my motion design work and of course if you're just you know if you actually try to create something really cool with this i'm sure you can create some pretty cool stuff with it and finally i love chromatic aberration so we'll just kind of change these values up a little bit and you can really get some pretty cool chromatic aberration built in and of course i love that because chromatic aberration wall will look cool with pretty much everything so this is a displacer pro a free plugin from plugin everything awesome stuff that's pretty much it for the news today guys if you have any questions if you have any suggestions leave them in the comments down below if you like this video let me know give this video a thumbs up Subscribe for more videos like this. My name is Vincent Wynn from The Creative Dojo, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.